the warrior kingdoms of the weaver and Kurz's ant videos are super dope super interesting these ants literally go to war like 24 7 man they're fucking crazy let's jump straight into this and check it out let's go on man Deep in tropical jungles lie floating kingdoms ruled by beautiful and deadly masters. They're sort of the high elves of the ant kingdoms. Talented right, okay. architects that create castles and city states. Right, so these, these are but they are ants. also fierce and expansionist warriors, and their kingdoms are ensnared in a never ending Bro, war for Do you know what's crazy? It's actually mad how many like different ant like honestly, like before these videos, I thought an ant was an ant. And that was it. You know what I mean? It's tiny, small, and, it, you know, there's loads of them, right? Now, I, I I didn't realize there's so many different species, so many different variants of ants, so many different ants across the world, so many... You, it's actually mad, bro. Survival. And the fact that, oh, they, that like, they go to war 24-7, crazy. It's actually crazy. It's really cool, to be honest. Oikofla weavers walk on long legs, have slender bodies and large eyes, which make them look pretty cute. The fuck is that? Although their strong mandibles and the ability to shoot acid also make them pretty good at killing. But more on that later. Their colonies usually have two to three worker classes that vary dramatically in size. There's Majors, so many different ads, And bro. sometimes even tiny minim workers. Depending on location and species, they vary in color from dark brown to emerald green. Other than their fancy looks, what makes weavers special is that they're in the kingdom building business. Right. They like to build at pretty much all heights, starting in shrubs a few centimeters above the ground and up to 10 meters in the tree canopy. But they're not... Wait, wait, wait. We watched a video about this like the other day. If an ant falls... Wait, did it just jump off the tree? <laughs> so let's say they're building in the tree and shit, right? To get down, do they walk down or have they realized that if they jump off, they won't die? Like, like because of its size and mass, right, and the gravitational pull and stuff. Oh my god, I sound so, I, I sound so smart right now. I've never sound, sounded this smart in my whole entire life. <laughs> but like, um, all I said was gravitational pull. That was like, uh, <laughs> moving on. Right, but like, because of its mass and stuff, you know, compared to like the gra uh, gravitational pull and stuff, if it jumps off the tree... Will it even be hurt? You know what I mean? Like, will it die? It, I don't think it will. So, like, can't it just jump off the tree to get down? Have they figured that out yet? One plant. Weavers will look for twigs look or lianas that bridge the gap to other trees and expand to every plant they can reach. Bro, there's definitely a stupid app that literally does that jump and just falls off. This way, colonies spread upwards and sideways through the treetops. The largest weaver ant kingdoms we know of occupy up to 1,600 square meters, around four the basketball is... courts. But the ants are picking this up. A lot of ground to cover for tiny ants on it. and impossibly hard to control. So, weaver ants construct dozens of nests scattered all over their territory, outposts to defend the kingdom, tubes or balls made from leaves and ghostly silk sheets. That's cool These as fuck. masterpieces of high ant architecture are created by the weaver majors, the larger worker ants, which are responsible for How the do they do that? jobs like fighting, foraging, and nest construction. To start a new nest, a major tries to bend different leaves in her surroundings into a tube. If one of the leaves is flexible enough, more workers will arrive to help. What? Chains of workers pull the leaf's edges together, reach across gaps, and grab distant leaves to add them to the construction. While the bending and pulling is going on, other workers carry larvae from the closest nest to the construction site. Usually, ant larvae spin themselves a cocoon to protect themselves, but the weaver ant larvae give all of their silk to the colony as building material. So when the workers tap the larvae's heads on the leaf, they release their sticky thread like tiny, cute glue guns. This way, the workers sew the bent leaf onto itself so it won't unfold anymore. This creates a central chamber that's used as the basis for up to 300 more leaves that are wound around it. Bro, I can't lie. This, th this is cool as fuck. This is super fucking Together, cool. They form little pockets and act as additional rooms for the new outpost. Bro, what the fuck? To make it even more cozy, minor workers use the larvae to weave additional floors and chambers. 
Nests are usually constructed as barracks on the territory's borders or as storage for brood and food supplies. This way, the ants don't need to cross vast distances to the headquarters, but have soldiers close to any potential point of conflict. Apart from one special nest in the middle of the network, which is reserved for the queen and her guards. Here, she produces hundreds of eggs a day, which get transferred to suitable nests with brood chambers. So a colony is a network of little castles and moats connected by suspension what? bridges made from leaves, lianas, and twigs. The, I, I, need, I need to see one in real life. I actually need to see one of these in real life. An established colony easily has half a million individuals that need to be fed. Fortunately, weaver ants evolved to have very close and beneficial relationships with their hosts, shrubs, and trees. What what are they called? The weaver ants? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to find one real, real life. The tree gives the ants there. a home and access to sweet sap to drink. But maybe even more importantly, it allows them to cultivate cattle, like aphids or caterpillars, that produce honeydew for them. This would usually hurt a tree, but these insects belong to a small group of VIPs. Only a few selected neighbors and the ants' cattle are allowed on the fruit tree. Many other insects, and even larger herbivores, are scared off, or what? even killed and eaten. So, in most cases, the tree only has to tolerate acceptable levels of damage while being protected from more dangerous pests. The weaver ant kingdom could be an ant paradise if there wasn't competition. Mostly from other kingdoms. Uh -oh. Just like medieval humans, every queen seeks to conquer others and make their land their own. Controlling fertile land is the key to survive in the jungle. And if a kingdom loses too much of it, it shrinks and is overrun or starves to death. So expanding and defending their borders is critical to keep the colony alive. When a kingdom invades another, it first gathers an army of a few thousand mages who make their way towards the opposing colony. The goal is to steal a bit of territory and take it over. Defending weaver patrols quickly spot the invaders and immediately release an alarm pheromone. Some rush to the front to defend, while others rush to the closest outposts for help, marking their route with pheromones. What is, why is this pheromone? Sisters, they jerk their bodies as this? if in a fight to signal them to follow the pheromone trail to the front line. At the site of battle, majors from both parties raise their bodies, circle each other with mandibles wide open, and try to seize their opponents. If an ant gets a hold of her opponent, the victim is pulled into a group of allied majors and pinned down. The ants then rip the victim apart, clipping off antennae and legs, and slicing open their abdomens. Oh. To slow down the advance of the attackers, the defending majors squirt formic acid over the battlefield to chemically burn their targets. Bro, what the This fuck? is soon answered in the same way by the attackers. In the chaotic battle, both parties lose countless fighters on the increasingly acidic battlefield. After a few minutes, the backup from the outposts arrive, and the time window for a successful attack slowly closes. This is when the battle turns. The defenders slowly push back the attack party. In the end, the attackers can't keep up and have to retreat. For both parties, it was a costly battle. Bro, Thousands this is of corpses mental. Like piled up on the ground under the battlefield. I can't, bro, like honestly, like I never thought learning about ants would be like so fucking and cool. Ever did. Are severely injured. The defending colonies' nests and brood are safe, though. The attackers' attempt to steal Get new valuable here, territory I... has failed. For today, they'll try again soon. Uh, like, how would they know which one? Like. I, I've, I've watched the, uh, another video to this. In fact, I've watched both of them. One of them I wasn't able to upload to YouTube, which is unfortunate. But like, so I know that ants will attack other ants that are different species and stuff. But like, surely in this forest, the weaver ants are also attacking the other weaver ants, right? Because they might not like they're in the same location, but they're not the same kind of colony, right? So they must look the same. So how can they tell each other apart? Or are they different species? but the kingdom will be ready. For the high ants of the floating kingdoms, war is nothing special, it's just a fact of life. Because as we know, empires never ever have enough. And the weaver ants are ready to fight.
This video is so part fucking three cool. in a series that was developed. Yeah, I, I I've got the part one on my channel already. Part two, I wasn't on. Um, I was unable to upload it, which is unfortunate. And uh, this is part three. Support of Curiosity Stream. A subscription streaming Bro, service. that was a super dope ass video. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't realize how cool ants could fucking be. <laughs> but uh, super dope video. Yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy it too. If you did, make sure to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.